Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining this evening. I'm Sue Heffelfinger. I'm a clinical psychologist at KSB's Behavioral Health Outpatient Department. I wanna thank Erin Fox and KSB Community Wellness for putting on this presentation on stress and the holidays. So the holiday season is called the most wonderful time of the year. That's that famous Christmas song from so many years ago. And it, I think the expectation is that we're gonna feel joy, happiness, family and friends, togetherness and peace. Uh, unfortunately though, for most of us, there's some unwelcome guests at holiday time. There's stress, there could be sadness, depression, anxiety. And that's what the talk's about tonight is trying to help you come up with some tools and ways that you can manage the stress so you can really enjoy your holiday season. We're going into the holiday season stretch now. Over the next couple of months, no matter what holiday you celebrate, there's bound to be a lot of extra activities and commitments and gatherings that you're gonna be attending or planning or hosting. And all of that combined can make us feel stressed with all the extra activities and commitments and demands. So stress affects our body in so many different ways. And on the slide, you can see a lot of yellow dots that's kind of pointing out all the different areas of the body that are affected by stress. So for me, I know if I get stressed, I notice muscle tension, like in my shoulders, or I might get a headache. Other people could have trouble sleeping or have digestive problems, but there's just a whole list of ways that stress can affect your body. And so that's why I think it's important to learn some strategies to manage it so it doesn't interfere with, with our ability to enjoy an event or our ability to get the job done. So common causes of holiday stress. The obvious first one is just too much to do in too little time. So the holidays bring a lot of fun activities, but a lot of extra work. So there might be cooking, cleaning, shopping, gift wrapping, gatherings, extra get togethers or family dinners or friend gatherings. And it can all lead to a sense of exhaustion and stress. Another common cause of stress is financial strain. There's a lot of pressure to buy special gifts for a lot of different people. And you know, if you have kids in school, there might be uh, multiple teachers you're trying to do something for or your coworkers or even your family members. So all of that can add up. And I think it's really easy to overspend sometimes, especially with online shopping. And that can cause a lot of financial stress when those bills roll in. The next one I think is a really common stressor and that's our unrealistic expectations. A lot of times we put pressure on ourselves that we need to host the perfect holiday dinner or we need to find the perfect gift for someone. And that can lead to a lot of overthinking and worrying, some stress and anxiety can creep in. We can spend too much time trying to create you know, this perfect situation. That can lead to overspending and then of course disappointment if we feel like we've fallen short in some way. And then I wanna say a special word to people who are going through grief or have had some kind of major change or loss, you know, either recently or just in their family, in their personal lives, because you know, grief and loss doesn't take a break <laughs> for the holidays. And it could be really painful to see pictures of you know, happy people and happy families and those Hallmark movies or in ads on TV or on your, your Facebook scroll <laughs> if you're dealing with that pain and sadness. So just know you're not alone. Um, you know, it can be a very painful time for people as they're sitting with their loss and their grief. Okay, so some practical tips for how to manage these stressors. First step that we can all do is really stop and think, you know, what has gotten me stressed in past years? So try to think of the past holidays. What has really been, you know, the hardest thing for you? Is it all the extra demands and activities where you feel stressed and rushed? Is it the financial strain? Try to, try to identify your own personal triggers that end up making you feel stressed so that you can get a plan around them. The next step is once you know like all the things you have to do, it's really to start planning ahead. And so now is the time to start planning for this year's holiday season. And you know, that might mean if you are hosting, you might make a list of all, you know, the groceries you have to buy, or you might make a list of all the gifts you need to buy. 
it's also important to set a specific time for when you're going to do those things. So just knowing, okay, on Saturday, I'm going to go shopping. On Sunday, I'll wrap gifts. That can do a lot to get those worries out of our heads and just down on paper so we don't have to really be thinking about it and worrying about it anymore. Another thing is to determine your budget ahead of time. So decide how much do you want to spend on gifts? How much do you want to spend on hosting and meals? And that avoids a lot of financial stress if you can just stick to that budget. Easier said than done. So next is monitor your stress level. So really take time every day, even multiple times a day, to check in with yourself and ask yourself, you know, hey, what's my stress level? And you can rate it zero to 10. So if zero is no stress at all and 10 is the most stressed you've ever been in your life, just ask yourself, what's your number? And take a break, like take make time for yourself Usually it's it's time alone where we recharge, um, but you know yourself the best. So if it's doing something with with the loved one, then go for it. It's important though to to set aside time to do something that's either relaxing or pleasurable for yourself. And sometimes that's all the recharge that we need to to deal with the stress. And a key thing to remember about that is don't wait till your stress levels are seven, eight, nine start to take those breaks when you're just starting to feel it, three, four, or five, that's when you can have the most impact and it'll be a lot easier to calm down and manage that stress. So the next tip is work on having very realistic expectations. So lower your expectations if you're the type of person who tends to have those perfectionistic hopes <laughs> for the season and try to really think in a way that's not overly positive, but just realistic. And remind yourself that holiday traditions can change as your family grows and change changes. It doesn't have to be the same every year to be the perfect holiday or to be a, a good enough holiday. Next tip is practice your assertive skill and say no. Um, there might not be uh, the possibility that you can say yes to every single gathering or every single activity. Another way to be assertive is just to ask other people for help. If there's any part of your, you know, task that you're feeling overwhelmed with, if you can ask someone to help you out, that could be a way to do it. You could invite people over and say, hey, let's all bring our gifts and we'll have a wrapping party and drink hot cocoa and wrap gifts together. So the last thing on this slide is don't forget to keep up with your healthy habits. A lot of times, you know, it's there's that fun aspect of the holidays and it kind of feels like, you know, we can abandon our, our good self-care habits. It goes a really long way though to managing our stress if we can focus on getting good sleep, not staying up too late, trying to get that good physical exercise, eat as nutritious as possible, stay hydrated. Also practicing those daily relaxation things, trying to do some deep breathing or meditation whatever works for you. Trying to stick with those healthy habits will be helpful. So for those people who are going through grief or loss or feeling especially sad this holiday season, this, this slide is addressing that. I think it's important to just acknowledge your feelings and, and let yourself know, hey, it's okay that I'm not joyful this year. Um, I might have moments of joy, but I'm also going to have a lot of moments where I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling that pain. And that's to be expected. So fighting against it and trying not to feel that way and putting pressure on yourself to smile and be happy and have have this perfect holiday just isn't realistic. So go ahead and, and acknowledge those feelings and allow yourself that time and space to grieve. And it's okay to be flexible and change the plans, especially if this is your first first or second year going through a major change or loss. It's okay to not do things the exact same way and to try to build some new traditions or rituals. And always reach out for help or support if you feel like things are starting to get stressful for you. You can talk to friends or family. Another way to, to cope, I think, is to get outside our own heads and outside ourselves and really think, okay, what could I do to help other people? And you can reach out to community organizations to try to do some kind of volunteer work. That's always something that I think can be really useful um, for ourselves as well. And then lastly, just know that there's professional help out there. 
um, and don't be afraid to seek it because there's sometimes it only takes a few sessions to to learn some tools and skills to feel a whole lot better about what you're going through. So that wraps up our presentation and I just want to wish you and your families happy holidays from KSB. We hope you have a very peaceful holiday season and reach out if you have questions about this presentation. My email address is at the bottom of the slide and then the KSB Behavioral Health Department phone number is also at the bottom of the screen. And you can call that number 815-285-5638 if you want to learn more about receiving counseling services. Happy holidays.